Thanks for tuning in to another starting lineup video for the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season as we take a look at how the speed charts uh, have uh, fallen through here uh, just a little while ago uh, at Martinsville Speedway. We have one more to go, and that is the championship race coming up a week from Sunday. So uh, let's go ahead and check out now uh, who was on the pole, who will be on the pole. But I'm going to tell you right now, the driver who's on the pole is the driver who was the fastest in practice, just like last week. Now, whether or not we're going to see a repeat of last week with the winner coming from the fastest on the pole, the fastest in practice, but if it's going to happen, it's going to happen with a driver that is not in playoff contention. Let's start first of all, like we have been recently, with practice. Because that's what started the day, practice. But it's going to be easy because I already tipped my hand. Whoever was fastest in practice is on the pole. There you go. Martin Truex Jr. That's right, Truex trying to get a W here. He's had such a tough go at it this season. His career is coming to an end. So wouldn't this be poetic? Give him uh, some kudos for really giving it his all here. And uh, when you take a look at Truex and his history at this track, it actually has been good. He's got three wins and 37 appearances. Ten of those are top fives. But let's keep in mind, he only has one top five with the next gen. And he's only led 47 laps of his 1,063 career laps with the next gen. He was 18th this year, and he started fourth. Did not lead a lap. Don't forget, early in the year, when things were going well, he was also going well on the short tracks. Not so well second half of the season. 24th Bristol, 37th Richmond. And again, as I mentioned, 18th here. So, look, it would be a great story. He was 18-1, to 1, middle of the week. What would we take him at now? nothing less than 8-1. to one. If you can get 8-1 to one on Truex, 10-1, to one, sure, why not? You know, I mean, this week, next week, why not? Just like I I did when I put Kyle in there. Same kind of reason. You know, you, you know these guys want to win. So why not? Give them a shot. So it could happen. I think it's worth it, but I do not think it's worth it below 8-1. to one. If they put some ridiculous number like 5 or 6-1, to one, then they can keep it. Not gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to win with Martin Truex Jr. with such a low number. Not with the competition he's got out there, especially when he has drivers that are desperately trying to get in. And at least four, if not five, no, they got to win this race. Okay. So now you see the other big story of the day. Maybe the biggest story of the day. Denny Hamlin sitting there, third in practice. I'm sorry to tell you, Denny Hamlin fans, if you haven't already found out, Denny Hamlin crashed shortly after posting that speed number. So he will start at the rear. And I, I'm sorry to just burst your bubble, but I, I would just, you know, the whole idea, band-aid approach, just rip it off. I don't want you guys hanging and waiting and then I got to tell you when, I, when we go over the starting position. But, you know, chances are you already knew this. Still, tough blow. Maybe this takes the pressure off. I don't know. It was a throttle issue that got stuck. And that's why he just, he, he, he basically, you couldn't do anything. Car was going too fast and he was done. So he's going to have to pull off minor miracle because he really does have to win. And considering how far back he is, that's going to be really hard. Now, I don't know, maybe they could find a way to, maybe there's like a late caution and some of the drivers have to decide whether to take points or not. And some of the drivers that really want to win the race decide, well, I'm going to, I got to win. I want to win the race. So they're not going to go after some of the stage points and maybe that'll help Denny. Maybe. Because he's not like Elliot and Blaney are. Hamlin does have a tiny little chance of getting in without winning. Tiny. But still, not looking good for Denny Hamlin. And then you see Bell looking good, Elliott looking good, all the way down here as we take a look at the top 12. 
Byron, solid. But what you don't see there are a couple of drivers. Now we got Hamlin, Bell, Elliott, all right, and Byron. But where are the other two? Well, they're not here. They're not here. Look how far down I got to go. Look at this. All the way down to here to get to Ryan Blaney at 29th and Kyle Larson at 30th, right next to each other, 29th and 30th. All right, so we're going to find out what they did in qualifying because they definitely better figure out a way to improve off of this. All right, so whatever happened didn't work here. Not the end of the world for two really good drivers, though, like that. Uh, Bowman, a disappointing 26. Logano, that's disappointing, but no big deal. He's going to move on. Redick, look, we told you anyway. We told you the other day, Redick is, is really happy that he won because this is not good track for Tyler Redick, and he does not look fast. So Logano and Redick uh, look like uh, they're just worried more about next week. So I'm not even, I, don't, I wouldn't even even think of going uh, in either direction, especially Redick. Forget, forget Redick. Logano was a much better chance than Redick. All right, so there's your practice runs. Those are the numbers. Those are some of the drivers that are disappointed. Some of the drivers that have looked pretty good. As far as manufacturers and how it all set up here, Toyota had four of the top six, including the top driver. Chevy, though, only one of the top eight. That was Elliott. So, hey, you know what? Elliott, he's in winner go home mode. That's good shot, good sign. Ford, only one of the top six, and that was Corey LaJoy. So that's why I'm not really too worried, nor should any of these drivers, I'm sure they're not, uh, regarding where they're going to start off. And I know practice sometimes is also a little bit of an issue, but still, I, I, I just, th these guys know what they're doing. They've got a team behind them. They can check out other drivers and how things went their way. I don't think it's a big deal as much as it might appear for guys like Larson and Blaney. So as we turn the corner to the starting lineup, again, you see there's Truex, but look who look who's there. Chase Elliott and William Byron, the two Chevy Hendrick drivers. Why is that important? Because Hendrick drivers have won five of the last eight races at Martinsville. All four drivers have won. Bowman's got a win. Larson has a win. Elliott has a win. Byron's got two. Matter of fact, Byron is the winner from earlier this year. Chevy's won four out of six. Okay, now, the importance of starting up front, not overly important. Now, this is good news, though. Look, you want to start up front, but remember what we talked about the other day, too. If you're looking to wager on a driver, it's probably in your benefit if they don't qualify in the top 10, because it just doesn't matter if they qualify 11th or whatever. We're going to get into that. It doesn't hurt if you're just a fan of the driver or you got championship futures money on these guys. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt that Byron and Elliott are up there. But if you want to wager on them this week, that's going to hurt you. And, and you don't get a benefit from it. You just don't. I'm sorry. Just because Elliott and Byron are second and third, it's not like, oh, Lord, they're, 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 the, they're the two drivers to beat. No, I, I wouldn't say that necessarily. Gibbs, okay. We, you know, we, we've said what we had to say about Gibbs. There's Harrison Burton. I'm not sure what he's doing up there. Bowman, that's a really good move because he had a really bad qualifying run. He's driving a Chevy. And look who's also behind Bowman, Kyle Larson. So you've got all four Hendrick drivers starting in the top 10. That's why I don't really think what happened to Kyle Larson in practice will matter. Okay, and same thing, uh, even Bowman, not so good. Elliott and Byron, though, you know, they were, they, were, they, they were the two drivers that were in solid shape. Byron starting third, uh, practiced 11th. Elliott starting second, practiced fifth. And then rounding out the top 10 notes, uh, Truex obviously is the fastest driver. Uh, Elliott the second fast combined, meaning practice and qualifying. Gibbs would be next, tied with Briscoe. Briscoe starts fourth, practices seventh, Gibbs fifth and sixth. Outside of that, the only other driver that hit both in the top 10 were Austin Dillon. All right? So he was ninth in practice. There was its 10th. So now where is Ryan Blaney? This is important. 
how far you didn't end up in this top 10 here in the final stage. So where is Ryan Blaney? He's not here. So where is he? He's there. All right, we didn't have to go way down for Ryan. And I think 14th is fine. And I'm going to tell you why 14th is fine. Four of the last five winners at Martinsville, these are all next-gen cars, started and won outside the top 10. Only one driver started inside, and that was number five, fifth place starting position. The other positions were 11th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. Byron was 18th this year. All right, so that is definitely good news. If you're in this situation like Ryan Blaney is, you're in, you're, look, Ryan Blaney, where did he start last week? 25th? Did that matter? No. So Blaney starting 14th is in good position. He's just fine. And what I like about this, I think Blaney's in the best position odds wise. This is just what I said. This is what you want if you wanted to pick Ryan Blaney to win this race, even though I think you're better off just if you're going with Blaney, just taking him win the championship, which I still think you're getting close to what? What is he getting? Like 30, 40 to one or something to win the championship? I don't know, something crazy like that. So there you go. Ryan Blaney starting 14th. You got Larson 9th. They, they were close with their practice speeds and they're pretty close here with their qualifying runs. So they're, they're and Larson's obviously in a much better position. Doesn't have to win the win the, to, to get to advance, but still may have to. Let's go down the line. There's Logano at 12th. So Joey Logano moved up just like Blaney did. There's Bell. He went the opposite way. Bubba, Bubba's one of our long shot picks. Bubba did not look good today. There's Chastain. He did not look good today. There's Kyle, also slow. Busher slow. Reddick really slow. Kozlowski didn't show anything. And as far as the numbers are concerned, Toyota... Now, this is important, too. They had the pole sitter, and they had Ty Gibbs starting fifth. Outside of those two Toyota drivers, only two... Oh, th- get this. The other 13 drivers in the top 15 were not from Toyota. So, only two of the top 15 starting position drivers go to Toyota. And one is... Actually, both of them... Don't have a win. Truex and Gibbs. Throw in the fact that what did we just talk about with starting position at this racetrack doesn't matter in the top 10. They're both in the top 10. So I really wouldn't be all that crazy about going with any Toyotas right now. Chevy, five of the top 10. Ford, seven of the top 14. With Blaney, of course, there at 14. All right, so that's how it's going to look. And what do we think about the way odds are going to shape out? Again, at this point in time, if we go back to what the odds look like on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Larson and Hamlin were four to one. All right, so Denny Hamlin is going to get great odds now. And that's good because you had to be a lunatic to take him at four to one. So now, uh, let's see, where do I think you... Where's a good number to go with Denny? It's got to be somewhere like, it's probably got to be somewhere like 15 to one or higher. Because if you don't get anything better than 15 to one, then they're ripping you off. Because Denny, of course, has been in a slump overall. Hasn't won in a while. He hasn't had a fast car. And now he's going to be, and by the way, don't forget this. He hasn't won at Martinsville since 2015. As good as a career Denny Hamlin has had at this track, over his last 18. Now, the good news is he's been awesome on the short tracks. He's probably been the best short track driver this year. Unfortunately, his worst short track result was at this racetrack earlier in the year. So I got to get 15 to 1. 
you're going to rip me off, then keep your money. Larson, I got to believe you're going to get, you know, maybe something a little bit better than four to one. Maybe you're getting five to six to one. The big winner here, odds wise, is going to be, or the big loser, depending on, uh, obviously, uh, you're betting on them, uh, would be Byron and Elliott. They were both eight to one, and I could see Chase Elliott or William Byron, probably more so Byron because he won the race earlier this year, being the favorite. I still think Larson ends up as the favorite, but you're going to see all three Hendrick drivers, in my opinion, as the top three. We just told you the history of Hendrick here lately. I think that's exactly what's, what the model is going to be on Sunday. You're going to have Larson, Byron, Elliott, probably maybe in that order. That's the order I'm going to go. Byron, uh, Larson, Byron, Elliott, all somewhere between four and seven to one, six to one. Now, advantage, Ryan Blaney. He was six to one. Now, I think you're going to get somewhere, you should get somewhere, I'd say eight to one or better. I don't think they're going to drop him too low because he just showed last week it doesn't matter. So I think based on his history, they're going to still keep him relatively solid in a solid number, but you have to get a break. You can't, they can't just spit out six to one again. So hopefully you've made a couple of points here. Uh, Bell, you know, look, Bell, this is just about going out there and not doing anything stupid. So why would you wager on him to win? I wouldn't now, especially even though Toyota's on the pole. And Truex was the fastest in practice. We just talked about Toyota, two of the top 15 drivers. So I'm not interested in Toyota. I mean, period. But forget Bell. He's just going to take things easy. He's not going to get. He's not going to overdo it. So I'm just not even touching uh, Christopher Bell now. Logano, forget it. I see no reason why he's going to try to win this race. And he doesn't look very fast anyway. So um, at this point, not interested. Now, Truex, again, I think if you can still get 8 to 10 to 1, okay, I'm thinking about it. I prefer 10 to 1 or 12 to 1, to tell you the truth, but anything more crazy than that, anything that just for some reason defies logic, you can keep your money. And anybody, now, Briscoe is interesting because we talked about how much we like Briscoe as a long shot. Keep in mind, he has five top 10s in all five next-gen races at Martinsville. Two of those were top fives. All right, so Briscoe has been really good here. This is one of his better racetracks, 10th earlier this year, and we liked him at 22 to 1, uh, considering he was fourth fastest and seventh in practice. That number should go down, but I don't think it's going to drop considerably, so you still should be in a ballpark of 15 to 20 to 1. That's, that's what I would think, and that's what I want. Uh, Wallace, who we, who we also liked as a long shot, has been pretty solid here. 9.6 average with the next gen. Third at Bristol, just his last appearance. Fourth at Richmond in his last appearance. So Wallace, we liked at 28 to 1. Now, considering unlike Briscoe, he doesn't look very fast, you should still be getting something like 28 to 1. So, um you know, keep that in mind. Bowman, another one of our long shot plays, 9.4 average in the seven playoff races, not including the Roval penalty. So Bowman is a Hendrick driver that's won here before. He was getting 35 to one. He's starting seventh. He wasn't fast in practice. I don't think that's going to matter. That number should drop. I don't know how much it's going to drop. It could drop considerably, but um, anything outside of 15 to one is still good for Alex Bowman, as far as I'm concerned. And I think that's it. So again, forget about Reddick. No way. Didn't like him coming in anyway. Uh, not even interested. And just taking a look at the rest of the field, I don't see anybody else. I mean, maybe the only other driver who we did talk about that could be interesting is Ryan Priest. He was seventh at Bristol last time out. Uh, he was ninth earlier this year. He led 135 laps from the pole last April at this racetrack. You were getting 90 to 1. And what else did we say? And he was actually a long shot that we that we were like, hey, you know, we would throw a buck at him. Um, the only thing is, will Ryan Priest win a race? I mean, that's the thing that I just think defies uh, any sort of uh, credibility in, in handicapper uh, coming up with that conclusion. But uh, I think he's a great fantasy play, and I definitely think he's worth a buck. 
Um, considering he was really fast in qualifying, not so fast in practice, you're probably still going to get somewhere around 50 or 60 to 1, which is fine. Just throw a buck on Ryan Priest. Why not? All right. And that's going to wrap it up. So we'll be back again uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. We haven't uh, decided which day yet, but that's going to be our last pre uh, preview for 2024. We're going to take a look at all four drivers, their history. The, we're going to take a look at the championship history of everything that we can that goes into it. Uh, I'll be back next week, of course, uh, to talk about uh, how uh, practice and qualifying goes over in Phoenix. And I'm going to try to see if it's possible to talk CJ into coming on with me right after the race and we don't hold off uh, for a Tuesday or Wednesday show. Because keep in mind, once it's all over, after next week's race, uh, we will have a few more shows to go, only F1 coverage. Um, But I'm going to try to see if it's possible to talk CJ into, even if it's just five minutes, like a live uh, post-race show on Sunday of next week, a week from Sunday. Uh, there is a possibility that I will be on live again. I don't know if I can talk CJ into it on Sunday, this Sunday. Well, it's going to depend on how the race goes, but if it, there's something dramatic happening, uh, I think it's possible. So stay tuned. That's why you want to subscribe because this way, anytime any program comes up, even ones that you're not expecting, You'll put on YouTube and boom, you'll see in your in your box of uh, your your library of plays, you'll see, wow, what is? I didn't realize that they did a show on Sunday. So that's the only way you you can you can get those notices if you subscribe to the channel. So please do that here at Prime Sports Network. Whether you're a NASCAR fan, F1 fan, or anything else here that we cover, uh, enjoy. If you have any questions or comments regarding the race, something I didn't you know cover, or just if you have. Uh, a general opinion on who you like let us know in the comment section and enjoy the race on sunday and we'll see you in a few days as we preview the championship four